You know, I get a lot of inquiries all the time about biofuel, okay? I'd like the fuel that's processed correctly and has been run through a filtration system and in a separate tank. But if you're just going to pour biofuel into your tank, in your truck, this is what you're going to end up with. This is the pickup that came out of a truck that has been running biofuel. Look at that stuff, man. It looks like freaking jello, man. It's nasty. And the truck is, you know, we've had to clean the whole fuel system. The fuel pump is bad. The, uh, the injectors are messing up because there's no fuel flow because of the crud in the tank. This is the pickup screens inside here. Here, can you pop those out of there for me? Look at, oh my God! Look at that! It looks like a friggin' suppository out of an elephant or something. Oh my God! It was full of gelatin because the waste vegetable oil or biofuel was not processed correctly. I don't run biofuel, but this is, this is a whole separate system designed to run the fuel. The fuel is heated up. It's got a switch that switches it back and forth. Just putting it in your fuel tank is going to have extremely negative effects upon the way your truck drives and runs. I highly, highly do not recommend putting this crap into your tank. On Spot the Shop Truck here, I actually have two fuel tanks. I have the, the primary fuel tank and then I have a, a big 100 gallon tank I keep in the back of my bed. The secondary tank lines come down and come over here to a switch. I've also split off the incoming fuel line here from the from the, the main tank and brought it over to the switch. So I can switch them back and forth and the returns back and forth between the two tanks from the switch. This entire switching system is a factory Ford switching system. Even the wiring and the plugs I took out of a wreck so that there's um, uh, no question in terms of reliability. You want to use the highest quality rubber hose in this process. Regardless of whether the fuel is pulled from the actual uh, main tank that's always diesel in my truck or the alternative fuel tank, the first place it goes is to a Raycor filter. This Raycor filter is absolutely crucial if you're going to run any sort of alternative fuel. It is an outstanding addition to um, standard fuel because it allows you to eliminate the screens in your tank and any kind of crud or dirt or kind of shit you get in the system will end up in this filter and you can drain it right here. You don't have to drop the tank and clean the screens. Also by running the Raycor it eliminates the need to have to constantly replace the filter up on top of the engine. Actually there are some systems that even eliminate that. From the, from the Raycor filter it goes into a fuel heater. Now this fuel heater is a, a marine heat exchanger. You don't see this out in the automotive world much but there's actually engine coolant plumbed into this and the fuel is, is heated with the engine coolant. So your incoming fuel comes in at whatever temperature and goes out at 180, 200 degrees and then is fed into the fuel pump. Okay, and then the fuel pump of course feeds right into the main uh, fuel system and goes straight up to the fuel bowl up there. All of these things are in an effort to, to run alternative fuel uh, to make it flow correctly, to make it, make it work for the truck. The fuel heater is crucial, especially if it, uh, you're going to run the truck into cold weather situations if you're going to run alternative fuels. And the switch is crucial because you always want to start and stop your truck on clean diesel fuel. It will start better on clean diesel fuel. We've actually run all different kinds of fuels in this truck, uh, different things, uh, vegetable oil based, uh, bio uh, mixtures of biofuel, um, we've run uh, automatic transmission fluid, filtered will run. Um, We've run all sorts of different things, mixtures of gasoline, diesel, and, and, and actual waste motor oil that's been filtered. That was smoky as hell. But what we did find by running this system and the different fuels is that it works best out on the open freeway. Um, round town and whatnot, of course, all the oil-based systems will smoke like hell at an idle. Um, and the veggie oil just doesn't produce the power that we like out of like diesel fuel and whatnot. Uh, but out on the open road, when you flip the switch and go to the alternative tank, if you're going distance, uh, that's an outstanding uh, alternative. Uh, you know, we've had real good success with it. One of the other things that I have sitting in the corner of my shop here that was part of the experimental process when diesel fuel hit $5 a gallon, the man was breaking it off in us, is a centrifuge. Okay, this is a, a marine style centrifuge. We actually had a, uh, a dedicated uh, hot water pressure wa washer that, that, that would, we'd run the fuel through and then it went into the, uh, 
the uh, centrifuge uh, spun it at 10,000 RPM. Your fuel comes out over here on the top end and your, and your water comes out over here. And, and you can see the sludge. This is just straight glue sludge that comes out of the fuel. Now, so, you know, this is part of the experimentation that we did. Now, if we, we ever go back to five or six dollars a gallon again, we're prepared to deal with it. Uh, but, you know, hopefully we won't have to do that. You know, alternative fuels are always going to be on our minds simply because of the volatility of the fuel market. You know, we just don't know from day to day or week to week what the price is going to be. But, you know, the biggest problem I have with alternative fuels is the fact that you don't have any real control over the consistency and the quality of the product, okay? If there was a standardization of this product, then, you know, maybe I could take it more seriously. You know, uh, when, when fuel was $5 a gallon, we tried all kind of different stuff just to see what would happen, see how it would burn, see how it affected injectors and whatnot. I have an inquisitive mind. I have to ask questions. I have to explore it. I have to see. You know, and the fact of the matter is, is that all the oil-based stuff, it actually would burn. Uh, but it, uh, um, it, it came with a lot of pollution. And I don't want to pollute the environment any more than absolutely necessary. And the other problem I had was with the time factor involved with going out to procure, you know, 30 gallons of grease from a friggin' Chinese restaurant, you know. That stuff smells nasty too, man. Once you get done getting all the, all the chemicals out and you go out and you process this stuff, it's like, well, shit, I'm just going to go down here and buy some fuel, okay. It just doesn't, the, the amount of time involved just doesn't justify it to me. I'm a busy person. I don't have time to play. And I, I don't have a ready source of that. That's why we experimented with uh, automatic transmission fluid and motor oils because, hell, I get four gallons of oil out of every truck I get. So even if we added uh, a third of that into a tank, it was worth it because uh, it would burn and, and it would smoke a little bit. But like I say, out on the open road, it, it wasn't too bad. Automatic transmission fluid actually burns really good, but you got to get it clean. That centrifuge is really the only way to do it. And, you know, to dry out all the heavy metals and dry out all the, all the, uh, the contaminants and clutch material that you're going to get out of this, you know, especially from a transmission shop that has it in abundance. I mean, there's metals and, some, you know, and then what do you do with that stuff? You know, it's, it's um, toxic. When it comes down to answering questions about alternative fuels, I'm not your guy, okay? I've, I've experimented with it, found a few things out. Um pretty much reverted back to the idea that, that going to the store and buying the fuel is probably the best way to go for me because I just don't have time to mess with it. Uh, the, the, probably the best system out there is called a Veggie Stroke. Veggie Stroke V3 is a system I've seen on a couple of boys trucks and they've had real real good uh, results with that system. It's complete, it's expensive, but you know you get what you pay for, you know. Just take old reg regular old vegetable oil and pour it in your gas tank. That ain't the way to go. Uh, it's just not the way to go. You you have to go at it with a f complete separate fuel system to make it work. And I, but if you do decide to run it, make sure you get it as clean as possible, and make sure you get that glycerin out of there. That glycerin has to come out. If you've been frying chicken in this oil or any sort of meat, there's going to be some animal fat in there. That animal fat will precipitate as glycerin, and it'll absolutely tear up your damn fuel system if it's not removed from the fuel. Anyway, good luck with it if you decide to run it. Um, you know, if you need any help with straightening out your fuel system, if you get a bad batch, you know where I'm at.